Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, we're going to tour the main garden, talk about watering. Today's going to be 90 de degrees. It's way too early for that. I'll show you uh, some plants that I've been growing over the weeks, give you updates on those. And today's video is also sponsored by Promix. I've been working with them for the last two years. I've been using their products for well over a decade. Now, if you're going to buy a bagged product, this is what I recommend. This is a premium organic garden mix. It's OMRI certified, which means you can use it for organic gardening. And the reason being is the ingredients can be um, determined to be organic. So this is made of peat moss, uh, cocoa core, there's lime in there, and that's really about it. It's a perfect medium for growing uh, seed starts, vegetables, herbs, flowers, use it for whatever you want, containers, pots, or use it in the ground. This is what I recommend. When you buy other bagged products, they may not have the OMRI listing because they have lots of additives in there like ground up wood and different materials that can't be deemed organic. Promix Premium Organic Garden Mix is perfect for containers. Down the line, I will be using the Pro Mix to set up my vertical towers here. I'll be planting actually potatoes and peppers. I just haven't got to it. It's been, um, I've been just kind of busy taking care of everything else. But look at the growth. This is my container area. The peppers are, um, there's no peppers in there. The potatoes are coming in nicely. That celery back there. The peas are starting to bloom. I'll go over to some that are doing that right now. Here are my watermelon radishes and they just did not form bulbs this time. Um, and now with 80 degree weather yesterday, 90 degree weather today, 95 degree weather, I'm leaving looking for any kind of bulb. There's just no radish bulb in there. With that 95 degree weather, all my cool weather crops are pretty much uh, going to seed. And what that means is, is they send up these flower stalks. They want to flower, they want to set seed, and you're going to see this throughout my garden. This is what the kale is doing too. However, with the watermelon radishes, these leaves aren't as spiny as regular radishes, and they're absolutely delicious. So I'll be harvesting as many as, of these as I can before they start to turn yellow. But my goal for this week is to get these vertical towers planted up. Over here, this was my cool weather garden that you've seen really from the beginning. The spinach is beginning to do that. Now you can remove the head, but it's, it's getting past its prime now because it wants to flower. You can still eat the leaves. I'm still trying to give away stuff. Purple potted peas. They have beautiful flowers. Now, I don't think it's going to be warm enough to really affect the pea plants. They're going to just keep growing. They're going to pot out and hopefully our temperatures come back down into the, you know, 70s, maybe lower 80s. What happens when this heat rolls in unseasonably? It heats up your soil. I've been talking about before. And when your soil gets heated up, the roots get heated up, the plants think it's time to flower and produce seed. They just think it's later in the season. With all this growth here, it is keeping the soil a little bit cooler, so that's why I think my peas are going to be okay. When we come in to this space, that was the pak choy, totally flowering. I'm going to let some pods form in there, save some seeds. Same with the arugula, going to save some seeds. Going to be trying to save more seeds this year, and that, that's my final crop of butter crunch, which is doing pretty good. I'll have to keep an eye on that because lettuce will kind of get bitter if you don't really pick it quickly enough once that warm weather starts coming in. We'll come right back into here. I just want to show you what's going on. The garlic, that is soft neck garlic. That's probably going to be ready to be harvest middle of June. The onions are doing pretty well. I mean, the whole garden is finally taking off. I want to just give you a quick look. That is where I grow most of my perennial flowers to bring in pollinators. I have fruit trees in there. There are some insects coming in chewing leaves, but when I went out there and ins inspected, I also have a lot of ladybugs. So there's a balance between taking out the sprays to kill the insects that chew and cause problems, letting some damage happen versus, you know, you get an infestation, the ladybugs aren't doing what they need to do, the good insects aren't doing what they need to do, and you need to spray. So I'm not going to jump the gun and spray too quickly um, because I don't want to kill off the good insects. I'm going to give nature time to really up the amount of ladybugs or predator insects to chew down and kill 
a lot of the insects that may be causing problems. And nature's wonderful that way if you have time. If you get an infestation and things are wiping out your plants, you know, maybe you have to spray. A better example of bolted spinach. This was grown over the winter, so that's bolting first. And this is all going to flower. You can't really eat spinach flowers. They don't taste good. But that's where the seeds would be. So here's my potato area. That has just gone nuts in the last three or four days. And here's an example too. There's some holes on the leaves. And I'm going to just wait before I put any dust down for the reason that I said. is You don't have to kind of smother this in insect dust when you start seeing holes. Plants can take some damage. Again, like I was saying, nature can come in and bring in good insects that kind of balance things out. So you just kind of want to monitor. So what I say to myself now is, okay, there's some holes in there. Let's just keep an eye on it. Maybe take a picture with your phone. Like in here, there's not a whole lot. I mean, there's a couple here and there. But kind of get a picture and then three or four days later, see if it's any worse. You know, if it's just minor damage, let it go. Saves you time saves uh, good insects because dust, no matter what you use, organic or you know chemicals made by people like you and I, they still kill whatever insect contacts it. So there's no like dust or spray that only kills the bad insects. That would be awesome if there was. Here's just a quick look from the entrance here. I mean, it's growing fast. Along with that, the weeds are growing really quickly too. So it's time for another round of a weed eater to come in here. Here are the kales. I've been inspecting in there. Let's see if I can lift this up easily. Get a picture. I think I made it too tight. Yeah, I made it too tight. But there's nothing bothering these. And that is a lot of kale. I think I have five plants in there. They're in a fire ring with the bottom open, so the root systems are going down into the earth. But this is just a great way to keep away the bad insects. You do have to inspect it, you know, regularly make sure nothing is starting in there, but there's nothing going on. They are just, you know, taking off. Another round of lettuce. This is kind of tucked in on the side here, so it gets a little bit of shade from the afternoon sun, which will hopefully mean that these aren't going to bolt too fast, that that lettuce won't bolt too quickly. Got in my butternut squash. I'm putting two plants in right in there. Acorn squash. There are three plants right now. I will thin to um, the two strongest. Kales, onions. These beans, this is what you see here, are all self-seeded. Now, I'm not going to be able to keep them all. I'm just letting them grow for a little bit. I may transplant them over, but I will put a few into here, let them trellis up. I didn't even need to plant the beans this year, which is pretty cool. And part of it was because I was lazy. They all kind of grew. My plan was to harvest them all, store them as dry beans, and of course, I didn't get to it like I wanted to. So when I took them down, the beans just fell to the ground, and that's what nature does. I mean, they're looking really good. Here are my purple top turnips. I'm actually afraid to look. Oh, good. So they are forming nicely. So they'll be ready in about a week or so. And my concern was they were going to look like the watermelon radishes. Purple top turnips. I said it before. They're really, really worth growing. More beans and stuff in there. The leeks are doing well. Here are the second round you know, behind those beet plants of the beets that I replanted. So I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, up, well, at least 20 beet seedlings coming up. So the second round of seeds worked. I will get beets out of the bigger ones, and you know that they didn't germinate well or something happened. But now the backup beets have all germinated, so this will be really a nice beet patch. Some basil down there tucked in the side. The peas are all starting to climb, starting to flower. Super hots are all in here. They're doing okay. They came in after the peppers we're going to get to in a second. Things are looking pretty good in here. Same thing. These are all beets and the beets here, actually more came up than I thought, so they look pretty good. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, another 15, maybe 20. Uh, beet seeds germinated. And beet seeds, just to remember, 
they're more of a pod. So when you put in a single beet seed, it's actually a pod of multiple seeds. So you're going to see more than one plant come up. So you're not crazy when you're like, well, why did five plants come up? I know I only put in one seed. You're actually dropping a pea pod. And when these get a little bit bigger, I'm going to thin to the two strongest. I'm going to leave two plants per hole. Carrots are taking off some of the kohlrabi. There's only four plants in there. I put in like, well, I could tell one, two, three probably put in 20 and they all didn't they didn't grow maybe even more that's just the way it is with this heat rolling in it's pounding the soil it's drying the top two inches the four inches so you really want to up your watering even if you get a quick rain or something like that the jump in temperatures going from like 50 to 60 to upper 80s to 90 can sometimes damage your plants and if I remember when I get to the eggplant, I'm going to show you what happened to them when the heat, you know, really jumped. It was like a 30 or 40 degree swing over uh, in a single day, but it did this for a couple of days. It was just, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the, the weather nowadays. But the bed here is looking pretty good. Plenty of beets back there. So my plan is all kind of falling into place that I got my root crops over here. These are Mexican sunflower over here. I really want to encourage you to put in flowers bring in uh, pollinators, bring in good insects, and I think these should be fine. This guy's a little beat up, don't know what happened to it. But whenever you have a plant that looks like this, if you look into the joints and you see, you know, plants or uh, leaves coming out of the joints, they're gonna be fine. As long as the stem is intact, the roots are good, these damaged leaves will just fall off eventually. Clematis looking wonderful. I've been eating, so I shrunk my uh, asparagus patch down to this size. It was really double. Got plenty, so that was a good idea because I freed up space. I'm still getting plenty of asparagus to eat. There's even more that I can harvest in there. And asparagus, as you let it grow, it just gets really tall. It ferns up. It also brings in, uh, kind of creates a home for some of the beneficial insects. I do need to get in here, use the weed eater, just chop everything back. If you keep chopping stuff back, eventually you starve the root systems of the weeds and stuff like that. Pepper plants, nice and green, lots of side growth. These guys are going to take off today and tomorrow because of this heat, the 90 degree heat. And what you might want to do is water today and again, water tomorrow. They're gonna to appreciate the water. You're not gonna make them over soggy or you're not gonna over soak the soil. But with the moisture, the heat, the fertilizer you put in here, these should really accelerate over the next couple of days. Onions are in here. Gotta get in there and weed out a couple of things. I got my zucchini in, just did a video on this. My squash, this is a yellow straight neck, I believe. These plants are a little bit yellow. Don't worry about that. I already hit them with fish emulsion. They're gonna come back in green. And there's only one plant there. There are two plants there. When you're growing squash, zucchini, you really want about a three foot space and one plant because they, they're going to get huge. Even like the two sunflowers that are coming up. So in this space, this is the one I've been talking about. I'm gonna do a whole redesign and I'm putting in the, the uh, Vajega garden beds. They're gonna be two and a half feet uh, long, or I'm sorry, Actually, they're three feet long, two and a half feet wide, and I'll be putting in five along here and filling them up. I'm going to be using the Pro Mix on the top six to eight inches of the raised beds. I believe that they're 17 inches. So in the bottom, I'll put lesser material in the middle, okay stuff. And then I really want stuff growing into the Pro Mix. It's the top four to six inches that are really important for the shallow roots of your plant. I wanted to show you this too. This is important. This is a one cubic foot bag. There's less plastic on this and you can recycle it, but it's compressed. So when you buy this, you're really getting two bags of one cubic feet. And I just want to stress that, that they compress this down. It's easy to carry, but as soon as you open it up, it fluffs up and it's really equal to two bags of one cubic feet. A little bit confusing, but important. Um, these are really easy to carry. You just grab them. And I want to show you what the material looks like. See if I can cut this open with one hand. I use peat moss and cocoa core, and this is, what's the main ingredient in here. And it's just beautiful stuff. This is like what I'm teaching you all how to make and it's already made for you. There's um, mycorrhizae in here too. Great for the root systems of your plants. 
but this is just beautiful and if you are going to pick up a bag this is what I recommend so this whole area is going to be reshaped redesigned I'll show you um, you know how I do that in a future video more spinach more spinach this was spinach from last year too so you know I, I plant a lot of spinach <laughs> more than I needed all the beans in here came up you know by self seeding themselves and I'm gonna keep I'll have to thin these out because there's too many in here, but I want maybe eight or ten or something like that. They will be all trellising up. And you can see they're just everywhere. These are the purple potted beans. The 25 jalapenos are getting nice and green. They're branching out. Nice V-shape right there. These are doing really, really well. I'll be getting some mulch down soon. Here are my tomato plants. These are my earlier ones. They are ready to start getting pruned from the bottom. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to make a gap from the soil really about this high. Of course, I won't do that right now. But as this plant grows, I will be bottom pruning so that there's good air, good air flow, less opportunity for soil splash to come up under the leaves. Mulch helps with soil splash, spreading of diseases, or dirt just getting on the undersides of the leaves and messing up the leaf. And it also helps conserve moisture. And it also helps when the sun is pounding down to keep the soil cooler. And that's how you can kind of extend the season for your cool weather crops. But it also helps the moisture stay in here when it gets to be midsummer and your warm weather crops do better better because the top of the soil is not just overheating too much. Let's go over to this space. Working on getting my plant or my bug hotel set up um, a little bit better than it is now. A little beat up, but that will be fine. So I have lots of pockets, like I've been saying, of places where there's flowers, places for bugs to live. Hardneck garlic looking great. Put in some more leeks some kohlrabi down there and if you look you know through here this is the fruit area all the blackberries are growing so this is a i think it's a brown mission fig anyway all the upper wood i didn't wrap it this year and the cold killed it off last year i wrapped it or the previous year i wrapped it the upper wood stayed alive from the bottom new fig branches are coming up but you know this guy just isn't the right plant for Maryland. I don't want to be wrapping it every year. Chicago hardy figs, on the other hand, do well in Maryland. They take the cold um, and then the wood, the upper wood doesn't die back. Leaves come out and you get figs much quicker. I'll have to cut all this back and just, you know, see what the new growth does. Let's duck under here. Maybe and come through here. I've been maintaining this area pretty much as I walk around. Um, I'm pulling, you can see I haven't done it for a while, but as the hoppus vines crawl out, I just cut them back, pull up weeds, drop them to the ground. Looking good though. The hops vines are actually, I just noticed that, all the way to the top of the pole. With this heat too, they're just growing I don't want to say a foot a day, but they're growing insanely quick. And then that one up there is all the way to the top. Fruit trees look good. Those are the, uh, why did I forget what they are? Globe artichokes. So these are the globe artichokes. They're doing well. This is a Vajega raised bed. Bottom is open. And a little thing you see coming up there that's actually my ginger so that's starting to work out pretty nicely too now this is interesting so hops vines if you decide to grow them they're super invasive so this one has grown from the bottom all the way up into here and I don't want that so I'm just gonna pull it away this is a fruit tree that I just put in and Sometimes they do really, really well, and you're going to see all these nectarines. When a plant is young, when a fruit tree is young or just planted, the root system isn't established enough sometimes to pull in the nutrients and support all of this fruit growth. So the tree is going to try and get these to mature. It potentially could put all of its energy and resources into the fruit, and then it dies because it's just not strong enough. So 
what I found is sometimes the nectarines tend to abort themselves if they're not pollinated correctly, but I will cut these down to about at least half. So I will remove some of the nectarines on here just because I don't want to kill this tree off. I've done that before when I let a peach tree just do, um, just try and support all the peaches that grew on there. And even though I read it, I said, you know what, it's not gonna happen to me. But that peach tree is dead and has been replaced. So I'll wait a little bit longer, see what naturally falls off of here, and then I will cut the, the nectarines back by at least half. After this is established for a good two years or three years, you can let the tree do whatever you want. You know, prune it, learn about it, they're gonna be okay. Strawberries, I've been eating strawberries. You can see some of the stuff I've left on the ground, but they are starting to ripen, looking really good. I got through most of the bib lettuce in here. I'll be pulling that out. These peppers are starting to take off. They were beat up. These were out early. They didn't like the 40 degree nights. This is lettuce I already harvested, and if you leave the roots in, more leaves come back. So I'll have an opportunity to cut that, eat them in a quick salad. But this is space again. It's just gonna be the peppers. Once I'm done with this lettuce, I'll put in some mulch. I'll feed these one more time with a water-soluble fertilizer, and then I'm just gonna let them go. This is where I had the red and green lettuce all mixed through here. Um, and I've been eating this. It's absolutely delicious and I've been giving it away. Shishito peppers look good. I've also been dropping in marigolds. These are marigolds that I grew indoors. You saw these seeds started if you were watching those videos. Pretty much I have these plants left. They'll be given away or they'll go into different places. Oh, those are the eggplants. So I started all those. They look pretty good. Let me go show you the eggplant that I'm growing. That's peppermint, lavender, rosemary, these were all started in these larger cells. I sell these at my seed shop, and they've been in here since January, and these plugs are really nice. If you go to buy lavender, even something like this size, it can be like four bucks a plant. So that's $32, well, I'm sorry, four, eight, 12, that's $24 worth of plants technically that I started for pennies. And these were just under the grow lights. These were actually, purchased. These were started under the grow lights, left in the containers, they're doing really well, or I up potted them into these two and a half inch containers, and that's rosemary. So rosemary, that's a lavender, rosemary, and rosemary. It's a great way to save money. This is easily a hundred bucks in rosemary and lavender plants if you're buying them, you know, at four dollars a pop, or at least close to that. These will be going all through my gar- uh, yeah, these will be going out all through my garden. Lavender is a wonderful attractor of pollinating bees and we just use a lot of rosemary. I love the way that it smells. Just looking over here real quick, you can see the radishes just about ready to be harvested. They're kind of tiny but they're absolutely delicious. So again, you can grow radishes in something like that. Over there are my annuals. They're getting put out throughout the, the gardens. Towers are looking good. Strawberries are looking healthy. This is where you don't want to get fooled because sometimes we get, you know, a quick rain, but then the temperatures jump up to 80, up to 90. Your towers are going to dry out really quickly. And we're kind of in that mode, well, it's still spring, you don't have to water as much. Just keep an eye on your plants. When in doubt, water more. So here is my eggplant area. So this eggplant, last video, looked wonderful. Looked pretty good. This one's okay. That was one that I just showed you. That was one of my transplants. When the temperature swings were 30, 40 degrees, and then we got almost into the upper 80s a couple days ago, the sun just fried the leaves of my eggplant. Even though they were um, acclimated, they just weren't up to the task of being able to deal with the UV rays from the sun. The good news is the stem is really strong and there's side growth, growth coming out. So this plant will be okay. Um, I've already given them some water-soluble nitrogen. That's what you do when you lose a bunch of leaves. And you can see the growth right there. If I flip this over, that is a flea beetle right by my thumb. You can see it crawling. So these have to get some insect dust on there. This is some lavender and rosemary that I bought. And these were actually um, 
$3.98 a plant, so that gives you some idea of the cost. I have a plan to put tons of lavender in different varieties to kind of see what stick, so I had to buy something I didn't grow. So the eggplant will be okay, but keep in mind these temperature swings and then high heat can really mess up your garden, especially here in Maryland Zone 7. Here's just a quick look from this side. So things are good. Getting the weeding under control, and again, try not to overly stress about tasks and chores you have to do in your garden. You can only do so much. Just stay steady, and you're gonna get nice harvest out of your garden. Things are gonna be under control. And again, I recommend, if you're gonna pick up a bag product, the Pro Mix is a wonderful product to use in your garden in so many different ways, because you can also use it for seed starting. Let's go over to my other garden, I just want to show you real quick the pepper plants. If you saw that video, they were all beaten up. I gave them some water-soluble fertilizer maybe four or five days ago, but they're coming back to life. So let's talk about that. Well, as we're walking over there, I just want to show you my flower beds. So that Swiss chard makes a beautiful ornamental and you can eat it. But all of these plants in here, minus that sage variety, were all grown indoors in January, seed started etc all brought out here so I was able to really fill this up with the plants that I started growing in January here's another space too these are all coming back Gerber daisies I did buy the sweet William are plants that I seed started last year probably in January February they come back every year same with the uh, not fox, maybe a fox love in the back. They're all gonna bloom. But this is a great way, again, to save money. These are perennials that I started two years ago. And look how nicely they look. And they smell wonderful. Of course you can't smell them, but if you get close enough, you know why they call it Sweet William. All right, let's go into the garden right up there. Talk about those pepper plants. This is the walk out of my side door, which is by my kitchen. So this is really where I keep the kitchen herbs and I can come down here and get what I need. This is a great way to grow them. This is probably on its third year. This is sage, so you can use sage with chicken, with fish, but just look how beautiful those flowers are. I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous. They look so good. I think they look more purple this year for whatever reason. And here they are. So if you didn't see the video, these are all beaten up. I removed a lot of the yellow leaves that were damaged. This group got fish emulsion. This one got the chemical types. But they're just green. I don't even think it's been five days. They're all coming back. Lots of side growth. So yeah, it is worrisome when your transplants get beat up. But using a little bit of fertilizer, taking care of them, they're gonna just spring back. And again, with this heat, they're gonna take off. And here are like some of my transplants containers. Look how big that one is. So stay the course, don't over worry if something's not going right. Just put a plan in place. Even beat up plants are gonna come back. They wanna thrive, they wanna grow. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and enjoy your gardens. Life is short, but it can be wonderful. You know, bring a friend out, talk about your garden, share what you do, and just enjoy the whole process. Thanks for watching.